Welcome to CVM Stories, the podcast on customer value management. Together, we explore how companies can be more successful and the customers happier through the use of latest customer value management techniques. Learn key commercial and analytical insights from telecoms, retail, finance, and other industries that drive CVM forward. Hi, I'm your host, Sharunas. Our guest today is Ignas Brazdauskas. Ignas recently finished a gig at Ore du Qatar as a marketing director. He's done some amazing customer value management work in the telecoms, and I'm really happy to have him here. CVM Stories is produced by Exacaster. We help companies take their customer value management to the next level. To stay updated on our latest episodes, subscribe to the podcast or sign up for an email newsletter at exacaster.com slash CVM Stories. So, Ignas, welcome. <laughs> Good to be yeah. back. <laughs> yeah, very nice to see you after uh, some two years maybe, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, your LinkedIn says that you are in travel mode. From where to where? <laughs> <laughs> now, currently, I'm traveling in Lithuania. <laughs> okay. So, it's, uh, it's been a great two years. Yeah, I left Lithuania in 2021. Uh, and uh, I would say I'm still in traveling mode since then, uh, but I spent most of it in, in uh, Qatar. Okay. And, uh, I spent uh, one and a half years in, in, uh, in the Middle East. And then uh, last almost five months, I would say, we are, uh, we are, we are on our suitcase. Uh, so we've been traveling all the world uh, with our family. Okay, and we came nice. here for, for, for quite a short time. So it's, uh, it's uh, good to be back. Uh, it's, uh, I think it's, it's, it's still, you know, it's home, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think you managed home. to hit the football season, right? Yeah. yeah. During your uh, <laughs> uh, career in Qatar. So yeah. maybe you can tell a little bit Qatar before football, yeah. during football and after football. Well, when, when I came to Qatar, it was already football uh, okay. because all the preparations, all uh, I mean, including Arab Cup, is, uh, the country has been living uh, the football all, uh, for the last one year. Okay. Uh, it's been amazing, and we were really lucky. So because it came to, to our yard, and uh, it was it was uh, you know great supplementary experience to, to what we already experienced in the Middle East. It's sort uh, of like maybe the Olympics coming. I down. think it's bigger. <laughs> it's actually, bigger. I think it's, I, yeah. Olympics is a little scattered to me because uh-huh. uh, there you have different uh, different mm-hmm. types of sports, and here. Everything was was about football. We, we've been breathing football basically, and uh, all the fans. I think football has the biggest support across across the globe, and uh, having that in, in such a small piece of land, I would say, yeah, uh, it's amazing. The, the biggest distance between the stadiums were like 30 kilometers away, okay. so it's uh, basically you can you can travel half an hour. Moving and to the next, uh, and you definitely are in the stadium. You were lucky to, to visit a lot, and uh, I was really grateful and thankful to have this uh, as an experience. Yeah, so I think good timing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So uh, let's talk a little bit about. Um, um, customer value management. So you have been uh, uh, kind of very active in this area for many years. I don't know how many years, 10 years or yeah, more maybe, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But uh, let's start off with uh, definitions because what what is customer value management? Many people call it different things, you know, customer base management, segment management, retention management, and uh, lots of uh, words. So could you define <laughs> what it is in your opinion? Yeah. <laughs> really brought perspective to me what value is, right? So mm-hmm. value is to, to, to create something. I actually even draw some, some triangle ones uh, to kind of define what value yeah. is. Just to make it simple to explain. So it's about the speed, about the quality, and about the price. Okay. And everything in between this triangle is more of the, this, this plot of, of And of by the, speed you're saying? Uh, it's how fast you can deliver okay. to the customer. Okay. I'm not talking internally, but yeah, it's more yeah. like the value to the customer is how cheap you can be. Mm-hmm. how fast you can be to deliver a new mm-hmm. product or to deliver some, mm-hmm. some offer to him, mm-hmm. and how quality is it in mm-hmm. terms of you know, the product, in terms of network, in terms of your customer experience. Mm-hmm. So this is something in between that if you're faster a little bit, if you're better, or if you're cheaper a little mm-hmm. bit, then it's more value for the customer. Mm-hmm. So that's a really, really broad definition. Yeah, it's really yeah. broad. And when it comes to CVM exactly, it's, it's more uh, how can you bring more value to the customer? Mm-hmm. Usually is how can you tweak the price a little bit, mm-hmm. how you can be faster versus your competition, and how can you be better in terms of your product experience in order to you know, win this customer. Mm-hmm. Uh, so customers are always choosing according to the value. Lithuania, I think, is one of the best examples to, to, <laughs> to it. And, uh, but it, it goes across. I yeah, think yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, it's something how you are enabling your customer to 
be with you. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, when it comes to your practice and your activities, uh, I think CVM is usually about two things, right? Is how precise you can be with the price point and the product. Mm-hmm and how fast you are able to deliver that, how agile you are to execute, right? Mm-hmm. It's, uh, and of course, then data is something that you will be able to, to, to you know, make your, your decisions based upon. Mm-hmm. I think this is, this is you know, the, the data itself lies everywhere be- beneath, Supporting right? Supporting all the pillars, yeah, basically. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, uh, these are all the pillars to me, uh, but specifically, when it comes to the price point, because this is the quickest thing to, to, to change, but mm-hmm. also the, the hardest thing to change, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, because it does, it does uh, contain lots of sensitivity around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, can, can you ask one, answer one question about uh, importance of CVM? Because uh, mm-hmm. sometimes it seems not so important. You are tweaking small <laughs> things. As you even yeah. use the word tweaking. Yeah. But uh, is this uh, important nowadays in the telecom world or not? Definitely. I, I, I think what I, I've seen lots of different uh, telcos uh, from some of them more from the outside world. Mm-hmm. I think when, when I see CVM in the structure, uh, it's, it's sometimes underneath somewhat. In the organizational products, structure. Under marketing, mm-hmm. under uh, customer care even, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, most of these cases, it doesn't have enough of the daylight and enough of, you know, the, 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 the trees yeah. are yeah. a little bit below of, of, of what uh, yeah. the beauty is. And uh, I think there is lots of beauty in it. And if you ask me what CVM importance is, I would say it should be a PNL. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you name one uh, piece of organization that would be able to, you know, go through the whole P&L, mm-hmm. and I'm talking customer value here, how much do we gain from the customer? How mm-hmm. much do we spend for that customer? Mm-hmm. I think this is the only unit that would have the sole responsibility and, to be, and they will be able to understand exactly what's happening within mm-hmm. this specific customer, right? Mm-hmm. Overall, broad base, of course, financial reports would do the fit, but uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, mm-hmm. detail level and more of the action level, uh, CM is the only part of the organization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this is really important to make this voice louder, and uh, mm-hmm. I was lucky to, to, to do so in my previous ten. so mm-hmm. uh, it, it came basically to the C level. Mm-hmm. So basically uh, reporting at the executive level as a yes. standalone yeah. Uh, yeah. And department. Even though I had different, uh, the different responsibilities, mm-hmm. so they're both in, 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 in Lithuania and also in Qatar, uh, I, f- I think the, the biggest you know, achievement for, for, for us that uh, it did have all the top management attention. Mm-hmm. And it's very interesting that you kind of bring it up this way because it's quite common to structure products as PNL and yeah, yeah. and you have some product director supervising yeah. all of those. But uh, product is only, you it know, one small angle, right? It should but, be customer PNL. But what yeah. you're saying is like a segment PNL or like yeah. a customer group yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. PNL is another angle that is crucial. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, it, I think that requires a little bit of the ownership. Mm-hmm. And, um, Maybe if, if you go a little bit deeper, right? Uh, the trick here is like the CVM itself is really complex, right? You have to know the data hard part, right? You, mm-hmm. you simply need to execute on that level. But there's also marketing that comes on top of it. What shall we do about mm-hmm. this? What are the insights that we got from the data that we want to, to execute on? Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's already a clump, complex part. And mm-hmm. usually people in CVM are coming from the data background, mm-hmm. right? So, uh, of course, you cannot, you know, make some cliche on, 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 uh, on that side. But usually if you're really strong in data, then most likely you are a little weaker in the other parts. Yeah. And uh, to have that, you know, mix of, of features in one person does require, you know, a lot, uh, lot of effort to find one. Yeah. Uh, which uh, then to put him also on 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 on, on top of PNL is is something that really not too many people would like to, to to do because if I'm really good at data insights, I will be you know digging into the customer insights and I'll be happy to do so. Uh, kind of hard to cross into this uh, business ownership. Yes. Yeah, uh, and and, and uh, yeah. Th- this this business ownership is is something uh, that would uh, make you make one successful. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is how you get uh, CVM voice into uh, you know broader parts of the organization. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Maybe you can uh, comment uh, a little bit on the relationship between customer value management and marketing because this is uh, yeah. 
depending yeah. on how which framework you use, it's either part of it or beside it. So how do it you is see marketing. It? It, it is marketing. Yeah, it is yeah. marketing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, I, I'm I think when when it comes to marketing, it's a, a, a really broad definition. It's mm-hmm. what marketing is. For some, it's a brand. For some, it's a marketing like uh, you know communication, uh, communication, yeah. PR. You name it, right? Yeah. Uh, and I think that uh, in, in a company, in, like in a corporate world, uh, usually there are two marketing guys. One is more of a brand guy, yeah, and the other one is more of a CVM. CVM. Okay, yeah. so you kind of say that the modern marketing job is actually split into two yeah. roles. Yeah. And uh, the CVM is more the data-driven yeah. kind of customer fo- uh, kind of upselling, cross-selling, retaining focus. Yeah, I, and I, the other one is more acquisition and the general. It's mm-hmm. not only, I think CVM does play a big part in acquisition mm-hmm. as well. Okay. Usually it's about retention, but uh, I'm a big fan about, uh, okay. first of all, to put the ATL pricing where it should be. Ah, okay, and then, yeah. and mm-hmm. then, uh, then you know what is your field work, basically. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. if your ATL pricing is you know, too good to be true, then CVM would not. Then make, your CVM uh, suffers. Sense. Yeah. yeah, okay. Uh, but then when it comes to, to marketing itself, I mean, it, it's again about the type of people that we mm-hmm. have. And I think it's equally important to have some creative mind mm-hmm. that would enable you to, you know, think more of out of the box type mm-hmm. of thing and be more visible and be more bold. Uh, when it comes to, to CVM, there are lots of nitty gritties, right? There are lots of things that you are not even showing mm-hmm. for, for the public in order to make your PNL better, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, when it comes to uh, organizations like big ones above 100 or 1,000 or 2,000 people, definitely there will be someone who will be driving more of a brand type of communication. Mm -hmm. And there will be someone who will be driving all the the products uh, type of communication. I would be even deeper, more of the CVM type of thing, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And CVM is is something that, uh, it's again marketing. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. about the price. It's about the product. It's about the distribution. When and yeah. how it's gonna yeah. gonna be sold, right? Yeah. So I think we touch one topic. Um, uh, maybe we can uh, develop it now. It's about the ideal team structure. So we touched ab- about where CVM should be reporting and how the split between marketing, let's say the one type of marketing yeah. versus the other. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, how do you uh, structure the team. Uh, inside the CVM function, uh, what they should be responsible for. So is it like one segment ideally or mm-hmm. multiple segments? What's your advice there? Uh, yeah, it, 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 it really depends on, on size because mm-hmm. if you're in startup, then, then that's one thing. If you're talking telcos, of course, then uh, my goal, I'm not talking about the size, right? Mm-hmm. Because size can differ. And, uh, I would be uh, thinking about segments anyway, because mm-hmm. someone who is uh, responsible for a particular customer base should understand that customer base. I'm not even talking data that you need to feel, you need to mm-hmm. basically touch the customer to mm-hmm. make sure that your insights coming from the data are something that's really a reality and not, mm-hmm. not something that you just rated by your own. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when you have that segment, within that segment, I, I'm a big fan to have uh, basically a data guy who will be driving mm-hmm. the campaigns. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when, when it comes to uh, campaign itself, so uh, if, if, you go, if you can go to a detailed segment level or, for example, the, on the part of the framework, when you want to upsell, when you want to retain and want to improve the customer experience, then usually you want someone to be on top of that framework. Okay. And then if mm-hmm. you are big enough, then you might be segmenting that in terms of smaller segments mm-hmm. and if it's, a, you know, it's a newly acquired customer, so if it's a mature customer. Sort of customer. by life cycle. Yeah, yeah it's, it's life mm-hmm. cycle plus the approach or in terms of uh, what what's kind of uh, activities you want to do mm-hmm. with that certain customer. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, really, uh, I really think that uh, someone who is doing the campaign should be able also to you know, play around with the data. Mm-hmm. So, so like so hands-on data. It's a hands-on. Advocate yeah, of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I've seen campaign managers sitting outside of, of, mm-hmm. of, of, of this data world, uh, so it's more of the execution part. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, I, I really think that it, it should be someone who should be responsible end-to-end mm-hmm. and he'll be able to follow up that uh, to, 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 you know, PNL again to, mm-hmm. to, uh, for, for the post campaign. As a whole team, basically. Yeah, and, uh, for and, mm-hmm. and so someone senior uh, who knows inside out uh, can help guide and help, can help uh, 
mm-hmm. it's, it's more of a mentoring type of mm-hmm. thing, mm-hmm. saying, did you, uh, you know, did you consider that data point, or uh, mm-hmm. can we tweak a little bit on, on the product side, mm-hmm. or can, can, can we do something about, uh, about the overall customer experience? Mm-hmm. It's, it's someone who will be more of a mentor type of thing, but uh, mm-hmm. the idea should be coming from, from, mm-hmm. from, from the guys who are actually dealing with the campaigns on a daily level. Mm-hmm. What's the smallest size you think is practically usable? Can it be one person doing both data and campaigns, or is this uh, I've, I've been there. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I've been there. Uh, but uh, ultimately, I, I think uh, it should be at least three people okay. mm-hmm. uh, to, to, to make uh, it a, a proper. Uh, sort of the strategies, the more data uh, focus yeah. and then more yeah. execution but, but, campaigns. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to scale, and of course, mm-hmm. if, if you are having ideal infrastructure mm-hmm. in terms of how you process the data and how you are able to automate that, mm-hmm. uh, in some cases it might be even enough. But yeah. uh, knowing from, from, from where the telcos are coming from, usually there are lots of legacy yeah. and lots of data modeling that can be done mm-hmm. uh, beforehand in mm-hmm. order to, to, to make the campaign happen. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so next, that's, ne- that's very useful guidance, I think, for, uh, for others who may be looking to build the function or rebuild it yeah. after some changes. Yeah. I think it's a very nice way. I mm-hmm. think one important addition I would add to what the daily operations are. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that there is a campaigning part of all the data analysis mm-hmm. before and after. Uh, I think it's important to have someone who will be more of a product manager type mm-hmm. of role sort of this. pricing even or i would no mm-hmm. I, I would i would think it should be more of um uh, uh, it type of role that ah, would okay. enable your new ideas mm-hmm. uh, to make come true uh, in more of automate fashion right? sort so, of automation uh, yeah. role mm-hmm. yeah or mm-hmm. making some links between between yeah. between uh, other parts of the organization other other mm-hmm. tools that that you use mm-hmm. because usually i think the, the the problem is when you are really in the daily operations you will sometimes for, for forget things mm-hmm. that might deliver the value in the future, mm-hmm. so someone would not need to repeat the same thing that mm-hmm. he already done twice. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you kind of distribute that as, as, a, mm-hmm. as a task as a, for, for this project uh, management product owner, mm-hmm. uh, that would help a bit to make sure that it's still happening, mm-hmm. so I'm still can, I'm able to continue on my, on mm-hmm. my daily stuff. So it's more of of uh, of, of uh, insights routine rather yeah. than making sure I'm doing the right thing on the IT yeah, part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, I will just comment here. Uh, we hear a lot about infrastructure operations. Uh, then we started hearing about data operations yeah. because data yeah. breaks all the yeah. time. Yeah. Then we heard about machine learning operations. Okay, that's yeah. important, but nobody is talking about CVM operations. Yeah. And actually CVM operations under it has all of these, uh, what I just mentioned, yeah. and uh, CVM breaks all the time. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So it's a like, super important role. And I think this, uh, what you mentioned, this uh, automation role uh, yeah. is obviously the guy or a girl to monitor CVM ops uh, type of uh, metrics and so on. Yeah, and uh, it, 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 it's again more of uh, someone who has a little more free hands mm-hmm. from the daily routines. I mean, mm-hmm. it definitely would, 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 would have lots of things to do because CVM is a never-ending story when it comes to <laughs> new data sources, yeah, yeah, new yeah. type of models, new type of automation. But to, to make sure that this, this is actually happening while you are still continuing your own to daily do the thing, business, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it's important. That, that again, it, it does depend mm-hmm. on on the size, but uh, making sure that this is a separate a function and separate role to be uh, to, to be mm-hmm. future proof. I would say. So. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's yeah. That's very nice. So yeah, we dug dig dug in very deep into CVM uh, topics. But maybe let's go a few steps back. And uh, how did you end up in, in uh, customer value management? Is this something you were planning to do while <laughs> in university? I, I never knew it existed. <laughs> yes, okay. Sounds familiar. Uh, yeah, yeah, and I, I think this is, this is still a problem because no, no, no university actually trains that, right? Yes. Because it's still marketing and data altogether. Yeah. So it's a, it's a new profession that's emerging, basically. Uh, I came from data myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I studied econometrics, which these days is called data science. Okay. Uh, I was never uh, the best student there, but at least I, I think it gave me a lot to understand mm-hmm. and, and gave me more of, you know, uh, it, it helped me to learn a lot. 
uh, even though I might not remember all the formulas I got and all the math analysis mm -hmm. that uh, that we are doing on, on the big board with the chalk, <laughs> but uh, it, it helped me to, to understand how things can be done. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, after the studies, I immediately became data analyst myself in the media agency, uh -huh. which uh, was the, the beginning of the yeah. marketing yeah. journey, I would mm -hmm. say. Uh, and I think the media business and media planning is more of, you know, hardcore of the marketing when yeah. it comes to lots of data and figures and insights uh -huh. and target groups uh, that uh, is a little closer to, to what CVA marketing it's is. It's a very good training ground, actually. I believe yeah. so. Yeah. I believe mm -hmm. so. Data might be a little different, but the mindset that mm -hmm. you have the creative part next to you because there's a creative agency, there's a media agency, mm -hmm. there's PR agency. In, in the regular world and digital these days as Already well. Already combining the creative side with the data and uh, yeah. how can you uh, connect the two. I think, yeah. I think it's, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's one of the best schools from, from the real world to, to, to make your CVM uh, journey. Mm -hmm. uh, and when it comes to, to, to myself, so I, I started as a data analyst, but then I, I also climb up the ladder a little bit. So. Uh, I've done. I've been responsible for all the new client pitches. So I was also, you know, uh, had some some experience before before mm -hmm. joining the telco to to make sure I'm I'm able to sell some stuff. Yeah. Uh, so to, that, that to is some very top useful. Management. Selling the business cases internally. Now. Indeed, indeed, <laughs> yeah. indeed. And I, uh, th this uh, Excel and PowerPoint combination. Yeah. Uh, uh, is something that is uh, as a basic uh, ultimately, and I was really lucky to have uh, some experience with the coding. Yeah. So at least I knew what kind of person I would be looking for in my team when it comes to uh, things that are not fitting into the Excel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So wh wh what was your first uh, telco role? Was it as a data analyst or what did you already step I, uh, straight into this role? Yeah, that, that was quite interesting because these days we are running like hell. Uh, uh -huh. We are acquiring lots of new customers and I joined as the only guy responsible for retention and data analytics. Okay. So, <laughs> so, so from you day can, one you are responsible for, for everything. Yeah, but then uh, you did have to prove yourself, right? Yeah. So it does, uh, I knew already that it's lots of value in it. Uh, when, I, when I joined, uh, I was a little, you know, um, uh, how to say, uh, I, I was not sure about the telco itself uh -huh. because telco was something that, you know, uh, lots, lot, lots of uh, things were happening around and uh, it, lots of terminology and, and, yeah. and even from employer branding, uh, yeah. perception maybe was a little, you know, I was a little cautious there. Yeah. Uh, but when, when ultimately when, it, uh, when I saw that there is so big potential there when yeah. it comes to customer base and yeah. customer base management as, as, uh, as a whole. Uh, you were hooked. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, maybe you can tell a little bit about um, uh, what are the typical challenges in this role. You know, so for someone coming into it, uh, there is all the exciting part of getting hands dirty with data, launching yeah. big things and so on. But then what, what is the stressful part? What, you, you, what you, already name, you already <laughs> named it. <laughs> okay. It's making all things together. It's yeah. um, getting things done uh, through all the clutter that you have. You mm -hmm. have too many data, basically. Okay. The, the data points that you are able to play in, in, in with Telco, these are simply too many to, you know, to explore all. So drowning so in data is a like problem one, number one. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think drowning in data and to really identify the key things that mm -hmm. you want to execute on is one of the first things you want to do, and then you'll come. Uh, I, I think lots of lots of learning will come afterwards when mm -hmm. you you are able to measure yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, having the team that would fit in this role is another big challenge, and mm -hmm. that's why I saw you have Exacaster Academy. We had our own academy in order to make sure that we have the right skill set of of of, of the people. Uh, as nobody trains that, uh, yeah. it, it, uh, it, it's one of the key things. And I mean, so it's not only CVM, it's, it's yeah. across all the organizations, the team is, is, is uh, building the team is something that uh, is crucial. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's interesting that you mentioned, and this is one of the reasons why we are doing this podcast, is that it is a profession that is very uh, invisible. It's some kind of part of marketing, yeah. but... Uh, Finding new people, uh, raising them, educating them is uh, not done. So yeah. most of the companies end up uh, creating some sort of training programs. Yeah, yeah. And I know that you did uh, Tele2 Data Academy. So maybe you can share a little bit about that and uh, 
why did you do it? How did you convince management to invest? And uh, was it worth at the end? It's, uh, I think it, it, it's really worth it. Uh, mm -hmm. Few things that uh, we've managed to do is, uh, first of all, why we were doing this. We were hiring some, some, some people at the same time, while having one, you need to invest lots of hours into this training, right? Mm -hmm. And you are not 100% sure if that's going to be successful after uh, you, you take someone who is completely new in this area. So sort of one person uh, still needs education, why, why not yeah. 10? Yes, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. we, we spend almost the same time. I think, I think this is uh, the, the, the matter of scale. If you mm -hmm. need more than one person, that you, you should already consider something that you're able to club. Mm -hmm. Because you're taking your valuable resource from day-to-day from -day operations, then Asking maybe it's that. better to, 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 mm -hmm. to, to share it for, for all. Uh, there's also, you don't have hundreds of people in CVM usually. Yeah, yeah. So you have one person who is much stronger in one field, and there is someone who is stronger in the other mm -hmm. part of, of the world. So if you can combine that knowledge all together, it's again another gain for you to make sure that someone is trained uh, the best you can. Uh, second thing, of course, is uh, for me personally, was uh, you were also developing your team internally. Mm -hmm. I was, as I started alone, I was drawing this, uh, this, this business line, I would say, this, uh, this team mm -hmm. from, from, from day one. And people who were joining more of a special uh, roles, uh, they were also growing and they needed to, to have some of development themselves. Mm -hmm. So I think mm -hmm. when you train, you also learn how you're going to yeah, train. Actually, well, it's, there's this thing that you <laughs> yeah. learn when you start yes. teaching. You yes, know, yes, exactly. Very much true. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, both leadership skills that, yeah. uh, that, that you can train and uh, ultimately when you have uh, 10 good candidates you can, you can choose from, yeah. uh, it's always better than to choose from, from, from one, of course. Yeah, yeah. So you, you're saying is basically the business case was very obvious. And employer branding was something that's yeah. cherry on top. Okay, I think we, nice. we, we, mm -hmm. we were one of the first to, to, to do so. So mm -hmm. we got some publicity that was mm -hmm. also some, some attention that drove to, yeah. to us just before, just for that. And then mm -hmm. I think that was also a little bit of the leftovers for, for I, I wouldn't even say it's a leftover, it's, it's something that you get back to the country as mm -hmm, well. Mm -hmm. I think that people Bringing who were... people uh, back. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I, I think that people who were attending that, they mm -hmm. were having really good experience, mm -hmm. uh, even though if, even if they didn't stay that. And yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm really happy that uh, we are still continuing in, in, in that field. Mm -hmm. And this knowledge is something that, if, if not in, in uh, Telco, that it can definitely be used in, in uh, mm -hmm. our business part. So, so yeah, I think that's a very interesting uh, kind of, you, you make it sound very easy, but was it actually easy to, uh, yeah. to, to make it happen? Then? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I, I think when you have a decent uh, flavor of humor, uh, yeah. when, you, when you have, uh, you know, when, when you take the challenges of, uh, of a smile in your face, it's always better. Okay. Uh, I think mm -hmm. that this, this is uh, where it, uh, we had a saying in our MBA study that the harder it is, the, 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 the easier it gets. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So, okay. so, yeah, it was uh, damn hard, but uh, great fun. It's fun. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, I would yeah. say, and uh, convincing that and doing it as uh, what, what's never been done before, yeah. I think that's someone that, that's also helping the team to, to stick together and yeah, uh, yeah, to yeah. make it happen. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's much easier to have a challenge that's outside of, of the organization than to have a challenge with... Nobody is responsible for it, so you can kind yeah. of straight away <laughs> run with it. Yeah, I but think that's, I, that's nice. As, as you mentioned, I think the, uh, the trickiest part here is to be able to communicate and to convince that this is something that is able to drive the business. Mm -hmm. And uh, the perception of the acquisition versus retention mm -hmm it's still usually uh, not too, too balanced. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we... So too much emphasis on acquisition. Usually yeah. it is. Mm -hmm. Usually it is. And this is because there are lots of nitty gritties that you are not even able to explain to that extent. Mm -hmm. Or it takes too much time. And people who are doing that, we are more focusing on the real, the, uh, real thing than trying to uh, communicate that part. So, it's again the importance of, of CVM uh, that, that we have in, in, in the organization. Uh, it's, a little, it's a little behind to what the real value we, mm -hmm. we are creating. I think it's a super, super important point that you're bringing because even the academy was still called Data Academy, not CVM Academy. There is yeah. still uh, yeah. mislabeling uh, happening around. But 
Maybe yeah. I want to bring back one more point around uh, creating value from data. I think uh, there is a lot of emphasis on data mm -hmm. and uh, quite a lot of questions then. Okay, but how do we create value from data? Because yeah. that is not, there is not enough emphasis on mm -hmm. that. Do you ever have struggles with uh, creating value from data? No, or is and, uh, this a no-brainer? I mean, the moment you know how to do it, it just works. Or, or do you really have uh, such a hard no, time the, finding value? The, data itself has no value. Exactly. Yeah. It, it has, uh, unless you are able to sell that to, for, <laughs> for the B2B form. Yeah. And it's cheap as well. So. Yeah, and it, uh, but uh, when it comes to, to why you are doing this, mm -hmm. data is only the tool. Yeah. And even your insights that you are coming with, uh, yeah. It's only the tool. The value that you are able to create is how you execute on those insights. Yeah. It, and I think this is something that, that is the biggest challenge. It's not only to find out some, some good insight or to come with the model that's mm -hmm. making your prediction 30 times better than the mm -hmm. average, mm -hmm. which to me is... <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> what's yeah. what, what's the value? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. so, but uh, I think the beauty of CVM is that you're able to measure your value. Mm -hmm. So uh, when it comes to your campaigns, uh, you are always uh, able to measure the impact of your revenue and churn. Mm -hmm. It takes some time, but definitely you have some hardcore findings there. Mm -hmm. And if you are, your insights, your models, your predictions uh, were okay, mm -hmm. then you definitely see you'll yeah. see it. Yeah. Let's talk about this part because I think this is a super uh, important part uh, of CVM overall and uh, measuring your, your results. I think for me it's one of the most exciting things because you get to be tested yourself. Yeah. How good are you? Yeah. yeah. And uh, this is a very, very nice thing. Uh, of course, very disappointing when you are wrong. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it happens all the time. <laughs> but still, uh, when, you are, when you are right, then it's, it's a great thing. Yeah. But let's talk a little bit about, is it easy or actually hard to measure uh, impact? Can you structure experiments in such a way that you get a clear answer in a telco environment? Uh, in short term, no. Mm -hmm. In short term, uh, you can never believe, uh, you know, one month impact is, is, yeah. is, is nothing to me unless, you know, the, 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 your revenue came from zero to nothing and yeah. your uh, control group uh, stayed the same. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> then, then, then it's fine. But so if control you, group is, is always a part of what you do or uh, sometimes? It's, uh, I would say 90% mm -hmm. of the time it should be there. Okay. Uh, the, the question here is when you try to put some CVM into the ATL, mm -hmm. then it's a little different because mm -hmm. uh, if you have some offers that are valid for all the customers, mm -hmm. that means it's more of a difference within the offer part mm -hmm. than can be, can be managed around. Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to, to measurement itself, it's, uh, Yes and no. It's, it's easy in, in, in a way that you have all the data behind. Mm -hmm. uh, the question is, uh, you need to understand what is the real behavior pattern that you were able to change. Mm -hmm. If you are not changing any behavior for, for that particular customer, then, then there is no okay. impact. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, when it comes to CVM itself, I only believe in long-time retention. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, in proactive retention rather than trying to get back uh, yeah to the customer that already have the SIM in, in the rubbish bin. Yeah, so, so what's the shortest time you should expect results in, you know? So we always hear people, please give me results in one month, three months. Yeah. What's the realistic time frame to see business impact? I would say if you're talking long-term retention, I would at least keep it for three months, mm -hmm. uh, but that's a minimum to me. Usually it's even six months. Mm -hmm. So you still need to have proper routine to be able to come back and to okay. measure it again. So but measuring for six months after you do something. Yeah, but you should measure it all the time, yeah, I would yeah. say. It's just your, your conclusions mm -hmm. can only be done in, in a much longer period. Okay. Of course, you're able to identify if offer does work or not uh, from, from the, the next minute when you launch yeah. it. Yeah. And this is definitely the biggest indication that yeah. you have is target and control group thing that uh, that you are able to, to, so sort to of see. conversion rates and then uh, and revenues and yes, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So uh, and the, the, one of the most important parts is if your usage uh, has mm -hmm. changed. Mm -hmm. So uh, if it's only one thing that I 
I have subscribed to the biggest data pack. Yeah. That does not necessarily say that I've started to consume more, yeah. right? So yeah. that's only a short-term indication that uh, that you're able to to change, but maybe in long term does uh, that mm -hmm. doesn't doesn't mm -hmm. change anything. Uh, but again, uh, there's lots of measurement, and this measurement does require lots of interpretation as mm -hmm. well. And sometimes people uh, tend to overplay with that, right? So yeah. uh, it's uh, because of you know trying to get some short, quick wins and trying to present something that's not even true yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which uh, I, I think uh, in 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 this part of the world, uh, when uh, when you have all the data that that you need. Uh, it's something that uh, it's easy to play, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's uh, the maybe slightly annoying part of it that, you know, statistics you can make, I mean, they can lie easily, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much uh, mostly interested in how easy it is to get to the truth. Uh, in, in. So maybe you can tell, uh, just to wrap this topic, uh, about what percentage of effort do you spend on measurement, actually? And with this sort of evaluation, is this you know more like five percent or, or or bigger? Uh, I would say it's uh, at least one third of it. Okay, so to huge effort. Yes, measurement. yes. Mm -hmm. uh, but it it again it comes of, of all the infrastructure that mm -hmm. we have. In some cases, it's is is much easier. Mm -hmm. and in some cases, it's it's something that does require lots of manual work. So uh, uh, as soon as you can automate all the, all the uh, post campaign efforts. Mm -hmm. It becomes more of a quick look rather than trying to pull out all the data again and mm -hmm. try mm -hmm. to stratify the things that uh, mm -hmm. that, that you launched. So, uh, but I think, and usually we tend to spend less, mm -hmm. uh, but then you end up doing things that uh, yeah. might not be the best yeah. for, for your business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, one topic uh, I wanted to touch on, and we kind of talked about it, but not the direct way is, uh, there is a general understanding that personalization is quite important in CVM. Maybe uh, for someone who has not done any personalization, uh, maybe you can explain why it is important, why it works. Uh, so why it's a good <laughs> idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so if, if, you, if you take, uh, uh, I know, 100, 100 dogs that uh, mm -hmm. would weigh the average five kilos, and you put some code for that dog yeah. <laughs> that would fit some decent size. That that's uh, that's one thing, right? But yeah. when you want to take a you know giant uh, <laughs> San Bernardo, what was yeah. the breed is? Yeah. This would not simply Wolf fit. Found. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, I think I think this is the easiest uh, of of, Example. of of examples. Yeah. So and customers what are you're saying is that there is actually vast differences in the customer base. I remember yeah. I was once shocked to find a person who spent 10 times more than average every single month. Yeah. I was like, who is this person? How can he spend so much? Yeah. But most likely, I mean, some kind of executive traveling, really high uh, income person. And then you have another one who's maybe spending one hundredth of that. Yeah. So really, really, there is huge diversity in the base. Different, yeah. different uh, backgrounds, different customer needs, different yeah. type of usage behavior, different phone that you have. Yeah. It's, it's already uh, impacting yeah. what does this customer really need. And yeah. the guy who is spending thousands of euros, in, 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 uh, he simply doesn't care about Celco. Yeah. And exactly. for him, it's more important to, to, to make it work rather than just to you know, optimize the spending. Yeah. Uh, so of course, your, your approach to this customer will be very much different than yeah. the one who is almost, uh, almost spending a euro or a penny. So, so then how do you end up not having one million segments? What's the sweet balance uh, to manage? Ultimately, this? you will end up having a million segments, but then you would not treat them as a segment. Mm -hmm. It's more of, uh, of the uh, action, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this action, uh, we are moving towards the direction that there will be lots of different personalized actions that you want your customer to make or your customer wants it from you. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are getting to the real time. So sort of next best action in real time. Uh, yes, in the, definitely. To every single customer definitely. would be the vision to go With, with all the mm -hmm. consents to, to, to have in the background, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. But when, when it comes to where the CVM moves, it's, it's a real time with mm -hmm. as much background for this particular customer as possible mm -hmm. to be able to identify his need. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's so I think that's a very, very vivid explanation of where the data-driven state of the market yeah. is right now. Yeah. Maybe you can comment a bit about pricing, how pricing connects to this, because this is a really 
tricky area, right? You also can't end up having a million bundles. So how important is price in, in all, all of that? Or do you now design offers that are more uh, having other things besides the price? Of course, offers not only the price, mm -hmm. uh, but when it comes to telco, it, I think it, it becomes data, right? Okay. It, it becomes something that uh, you can uh, you can change, you can offer extra. Uh, validity, of course, is something that, mm -hmm. uh, especially for the prepaid hand, uh, mm -hmm. something that you can change for this particular customer because if you know you're traveling for two days only, yeah. you might not offer the package that will be seven, in seven days valid, and this mm -hmm. is, will only fit that particular customer. So you're basically building uh, more personalized pricing uh, as well as part of it. Yeah, and uh, again, when, when we come to the ATL, uh, ATL is more of a ceiling that you have, yeah. right? So you will not ask your customer to pay more or yeah. than, than your ATL pricing yeah. is. So it's more how big is this gap versus the particular customer's need mm -hmm. is something that CVM will, you know, we will, you will enable to close the deal mm -hmm. and to identify this ladder, how much uh, you are able to, 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 to get from this customer mm -hmm. in order to serve his need. Mm -hmm. And then it comes churn versus, uh, versus upsell. Mm -hmm. uh, so you need to consider both in order to make sure that you are not losing any, any uh, potential mm -hmm. benefits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think this is... It's quite simple, right? Yeah, it's, it's pretty, pretty <laughs> simple. I mean, uh, if you think about the classical uh, business to business, individual negotiations to find the right price and yeah. the conditions, here it's the same. So it just, comes, you just apply it to it the, comes to the every single person, right? Yeah. But yeah, I think it's uh, really challenging. But maybe uh, you can comment a little bit on uh, the maturity of the tooling in this area. So obviously to work with this uh, huge number of different mm. rules and uh, campaigns is a challenge. Is the tooling today satisfactory globally? What you have seen, mm. what you have worked <laughs> with or not? It's a struggle. I what's, think you are, you, are, you are the best to answer this. <laughs> uh, but I, yeah. I'm just really interested in the yeah. opinion because you know sometimes you have these uh, very nice tools, but really you can also work around in many other ways. Mm. Definitely, the, everything you, you do, it can be done manually, mm -hmm. right? But mm -hmm. when it comes to this type of personalization, simply you need too many people okay, because yeah. that would serve individual customer yeah, yeah, need yeah. On, on, on the kind of real-time basis. Yeah. That's why you need to automate. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm pretty, uh, you know, uh, I'm pretty picky when it comes to the tooling. Mm -hmm. uh, so every tool I, I've seen, I see lots of potential to be developed. Mm -hmm. uh, I still see lots of uh, unexploited areas, lots of integrations that are still missing. Yeah. And uh, uh, personally, I think I, uh, I think we have to spend a lot of time and invest a lot of time in, in, in this to make sure that we are taking the, 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 the right solution there. Mm -hmm. And knowing that it takes some time to implement, sometimes uh, it takes more than a, uh, than a year. So yeah. uh, that, that makes uh, your choice even harder. Yeah. Uh, for me, this is the worst that CVM, uh, the, the worst part of CVM is mm -hmm. that you need to spend lots of extra time in order to make your needs work. Easier. work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I think that this, this area will, will still develop uh, and, and yeah. quite, quite fast. Yeah. Uh, may, maybe you know uh, some you know, quick wins and quick solutions there, but uh, me personally, I, I haven't seen uh, the tool that would you know, cover all the needs from day one and that will be a more of a plug and play type yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. That requires lots of things that will be custom made and this customization comes with the legacy that Telcos yeah, usually have. Yeah, time and cost money. Which uh, is another uh, hard sell, I would say, yeah, yeah. Uh, where we, we know that we never uh, handle big projects uh, easily. Yeah, yeah. It's sort of like, you know, having an accounting function, but you're not giving them the software. Yeah. Do it manually. <laughs> I mean, this is the state of the yeah. CDM today. It's uh, really tragic. Not in all say. the case, I not would say. All, I mean, yeah. uh, I, I know some, some best-in-class operators yeah. that uh, were coming and looking what, what we've been developing yeah. uh, previously. They said, oh, okay, this is more of a world-class type yeah. of thing. But at the same time, when you are operating in that field, you always know what you want to tweak in order mm -hmm. to make your, uh, your team spend resource, your time, where, uh, where it uh, really is valuable mm -hmm. rather mm -hmm. than to repeat the same thing over and over again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 
Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, data. So we mentioned this a lot and uh, maybe one uh, question for you in terms of tip tips and tricks. So you said that there is a lot of data points that uh, you have in the telco and I think uh, it's uh, absolutely overwhelming. What is your recommendation to do data analysis when you're looking at some big data set? First, maybe it's a full segment. What do you do? What's your method? Yeah, so <laughs> it's, it's, at the beginning, it's quite simple. Mm -hmm. You want to understand where this customer comes from. So okay. you, you have a little bit of, of, of the customer background in terms of... Uh, Acquisition uh, it, it, Acquisition history, okay. uh, how old is he and what is the product purchase history. Okay. I think this, this is something that you know for sure because that's, that's been your business interaction with this particular mm -hmm. customer and it tells you a lot. So you basically kind of try to play back the story. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, uh, and then you see, uh, does this product actually fit his consumption? Okay. So when it comes mm -hmm. to telco, you only have few of, of the consumption parts, right? Yeah. How many? Data, how many minutes, how many yeah. uh, SMS, how many extra extra products that mm -hmm. one buy, uh, and then you see if there is a match already. Mm -hmm. If your customer needs are not matching uh, what he is buying, or he is buying something too often, uh, something you already yeah. you already know uh, this is either the potential risk or potential mm -hmm. upsell mm -hmm. value. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, then then it becomes a little uh, in more interesting when it comes to extra things to know about this customer, about his digital behavior, about his preferred channels, mm -hmm. about uh, basically where you can put the software in order to, to make it work. Mm -hmm. And things uh, coming from outside of the market mm -hmm. would only make this impact if your competition just launched the offer that would exactly fit this particular customer needs. Mm -hmm you already know this is a risk, right? Or so you do this sort of like intuitively or do you have some kind of check mark or some methodology checklist to go through? One of, one of the things that mm -hmm. uh, we've been developing is the same next best offer, right? Mm -hmm. So next best offer already tells you what kind of product you want to offer for this mm -hmm. particular customer, knowing his previous behavior. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This, this is something that's... Uh, so, so sort of using next best offer or trying to implement it would even give you insight about what is good or bad with the customer base. Definitely. And this mm -hmm. next best offer should contain both the uh, upsell potential mm -hmm. and the risk potential. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think these are two key factors that besides the customer's history that you're already able to track is usage mm -hmm. history. You are able to also put on top some some you know future forecast mm -hmm. that uh, that uh, might happen to this customer again. And mm -hmm. uh, if this customer is buying ten uh, iPhones in the past, maybe yeah. you would would like to offer iPhone on top of it, right? Yeah. So that type of customer behavior is more is, is something that you would like to start with. Mm -hmm. And do you work with the data yourself, like hands-on, or do you ask the team to look at I some used to. <laughs> I used to. So what's your state, state yeah, current but, uh, workflow? <laughs> no, my, uh, recently I've been responsible for both acquisition and CVM, mm -hmm. so CVM was something that was more of, of, Part the, of the job, teams, yeah. but I, I was really enjoying uh, when I, need, uh, I have to dig in and, yeah. and to look at uh, the segments. Uh, so this is something when you also can contribute with your experience in yeah. order to tweak a little bit when it comes to the offering part. Uh, but again, when it comes to the team, I really encourage for someone to own that. So mm -hmm. it's not me telling you should address this particular segment. Mm -hmm. It should be coming from uh, the idea of where the, go, uh, the growth should come from. Mm -hmm. So this growth uh, should be in, in the mindset of a uh, CVM guy or a girl who mm -hmm. will be dealing with, with that on a daily level. So you mean some sort of business hypothesis, basically, that yes, they're trying exactly. to a a attach? Yeah, and the, this mm -hmm. business hypothesis is something that you want to test again if you are not sure about that, or you, you, my experience would tell something different. Of course, mm -hmm. we are able to try it, right? Mm -hmm. So you can, you can try it on a thousand customers and see what, mm -hmm. what, what's, the, what's the impact. Uh, yeah, immediately, yeah. even, even uh, hit rate would tell you if there, is, uh, yeah. if there is a click there and ultimately the churn would, yeah. would, would also tell yeah. you. So I think what is very nice uh, here, you kind of mentioned the tests and uh, many people uh, still are stuck in this huge project transformation mindset. Uh, what is the CVM uh, approach to kind mm -hmm. of discovering the truth? Do you do many smaller tests? Uh, do you always test something or do you just yes do and it? no? Okay, yes so and no, no, describe no. your secret. Yeah, the, the, uh, it, 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 I think 
there is no one mm -hmm. way to, to approach that, uh, and it comes from from your culture of of the company. Mm -hmm. If uh, you have a vision to be as fast as possible and uh, as quick as possible, you take some risk and you, you deliver, deliver the message to so all the base. So you don't need the CEO to sign off on the campaign? It depends the on the CMO. company, of course. Yeah. It okay. depends on the company. Uh, I've been in different, uh, in, in different uh, stages there yeah. and I, of course, love the, when, when you're able to execute yourself because yeah. If, if you have that full trust that your PNL will, will, will be something that you always put on, yeah. on, on top, yeah. then, then, it's, then it's your choice, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and if you want to make it fast, if you want to make it uh, slow, mm -hmm. that totally depends on, on the situation. I, uh, I've seen uh, things we've, we've done in a half a day in ATL, right? Yeah, so, yeah. And I've seen things that we are still testing for a half a year and before we implement that for, for the whole of the base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there is no one, one, one answer to, mm -hmm. to that. But I ultimately am, am a fan of making things life as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. Because so this is... Learn uh, immediately. There is, only, there is only a way you're going to get value mm -hmm. is uh, when you execute on things. Okay. And then your experience should, should, uh, should be the... Your, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're you know, leveraged to make sure that you are not missing on, yeah. on, on so something. So for people who don't uh, maybe have a good appreciation of the speed and tempo of these things. This is not how, the area. <laughs> how many do you launch per month? Like yeah, new, okay. new concepts or new ideas? Uh, What's the expectation? You're, you're doing campaigns on a daily level. The question okay. is how... Uh, how many how, of them uh, are you tweaking? Yes. Yeah. Uh, and how, how big is your effort in mm -hmm. terms of, you know, if you have the proper tools to, to, yeah. to make uh, them, you know, five or ten different tests, uh, because usually you're still having some, some limitations within yeah. your team. So yeah. you cannot ask for, 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 for people to make, uh, you know, uh, 24 hours a day. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, at the same time, when it comes to uh, tests, I would say it's more of a framework mm -hmm. that you are addressing a particular segment needs mm -hmm. in terms of retention, upsell, and customer experience. Mm -hmm. When you have that and you have smaller segments within that framework, mm -hmm. uh, then, then you're good to go. And mm -hmm. if you are finding some new things on your way, saying, okay, we need to split that segment into the two because there, mm -hmm. are, two, uh, there are actually two different segments yeah. within one. Yeah. That's one thing. Next best offer is something that you are just, you know... Changing all the time. It, it's it's yeah. life. It's, yeah. it, it's life and it's something that is uh, taking a new data feed on, on mm -hmm. a regular basis. Real time most, uh, you know... Yeah, <laughs> I think it's uh, impossible for people uh, not uh, in this area to appreciate. It's almost like, you know, kind of uh, like, you know, keyword advertising on Google or things like that. We're basically tweaking every single moment, right? Yes, it, yeah. It's life and you are optimizing as yeah. you go. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. if, uh, and I'm, I was never a big fan to count the numbers of, mm -hmm. of the campaigns because mm -hmm. it uh, does not tell you, I mean, uh, there should not be a goal to launch that many campaigns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's more about the customer need. You have to address that particular customer need uh, as, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. as fast and as, as, uh, as good as yeah. possible. But I think the whole personalization uh, thing drives this uh, big increase in number of campaigns and you're, it's quite okay to have 400 things live at the same time because they're just targeting many smaller micro yeah. segments. And yes. This is normal. Yes. I think this is very big difference from the traditional marketing where you say, I have one campaign live yeah. instead of 400. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so very, very uh, good insights there. Uh, I would like to ask uh, about uh, differences between, uh, let's say, European uh, telecom landscape, so like Baltics mm -hmm. uh, versus Qatar. What, what are okay. the notable uh, uh, things that you can share? Yeah, so what's different? Telcos, telcos are quite similar as, mm -hmm. as, uh, um, as, as a business. But uh, I think what's unique in the Middle East is that you have a real diverse customer base there. Okay. Uh, diversity means, I mean, the segmentation, first of all, comes as a nationality, right? Okay. Language, and nationality, and so on. I, I can't remember by heart, but I'm sure there will be more than 100 different nationalities within one wow. customer base. Okay. And uh, 20 of, 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 of those will play a really significant part. Okay. I so, think that's a big, uh, let's say, interesting topic for Baltics, maybe not so new for UK and other large yes, uh, markets yeah, with diverse yeah. 
uh, inhabitants, but here for sure, yeah. And uh, com compared to Baltics, you, you barely use our language than, than, uh, yeah. than your Lithuanian, sometimes English, sometimes our, but uh, usually it's, it's quite straightforward and you are finding siblings within one big segment. Yeah. And there, uh, I mean, there is no better way to define segments there rather than taking the nationality okay. yet. Mm -hmm. Does the behavior differ, di a lot. differ inside the segment? A lot, yeah? a lot. Okay. And even within, uh, I would take India as an example, it's a big diaspora in, in, in mm -hmm. Qatar, it's the biggest population actually from all the nationalities. Mm -hmm. Uh, even within Indian segment, you have like 20 different languages in, in, in one yeah, country yeah, yeah, yeah. and you yeah. are not even sure that your message will be delivered in, and, in, and uh, understood in, yeah. in, in regular, yeah. in regular uh, Hindu. Yeah. Uh, so this is uh, very uh, much a different. A whole other uh, level of yes, personalization yes, needed. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and even within that, uh, there are uh, there are customers that are really you know cost conscious, and we are saving every every penny. Yeah. And there are uh, people who are uh, really premium customers yeah. that are having completely different needs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you cannot take one segment as a whole. Yeah. Uh, identifying that, knowing the previous would tell you a lot, but also I don't, uh, knowing what, uh, what is the potential for yeah. this particular customer, it's, it's again another cut, right? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and ultimately you'll get to, to, to a segment of one, mm -hmm. but when it comes to a general approach, on, uh, I'm talking about ATL pricing as well, uh, you still need to consider that and there is, uh, um, there is a vast amount of different products that uh, we were catering for. I think mm -hmm. there the, the biggest difference there is that product catalog that we have at the, at the back end is, is, is much bigger yeah. than you'll find it here. Yeah, but I think it has been a trend uh, in the telcos for some years, right? So they're adding more and more and more products to the uh, overall portfolio, things like insurance and so on, right? And then uh, the pricing as well is differentiating. So do you see that as a, as a trend uh, that will continue or it has some kind of natural limits? Yeah, I think, uh, I think at least in ATL, mm -hmm. it will become more simple. Okay. I think uh, the simplicity for the customer to choose initially mm -hmm. is really important. Uh, mm -hmm. And that can be also your competitive edge as well. Mm -hmm. if, if you are uh, uh, there to serve your CVM, then mm -hmm. it's a whole iceberg underneath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I think it will be there uh, because then you will be able to identify the, the, the specific customer needs. Mm -hmm. So you will try to you know, close the gaps with your CVM mm -hmm. for ATL pricing that might be there. So kind of very interesting combination, super simple ATL uh, and then really diverse and uh, flexible uh, that would be uh, that would be uh, uh, my initial approach. Of mm -hmm. course, it can depend on uh, market to market, and yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, having having mm -hmm. five products in, in ATL in, in, in the Middle East mm -hmm. would simply not work yeah, because yeah. even as, as your first choice, yeah. it should be it should be much more to to, to cater for. But ultimately, uh, the idea is to make it really simple, and then to make it because customers at the end of the day. They would not care how many products you have in your Absolutely, backend. Absolutely, yeah. This is this is your headache, right? Yeah, to yeah. make sure that it's still relevant and it's not having too much legacy because that will stop mm -hmm. other things to be developed. But when it comes to uh, the simplicity, is is the customers should even should have both ATL and and, and BTL pricing mm -hmm. as simple as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think and that's individual, uh, on individual level, even you have uh, thousands of, of them in, in your backend, you only see uh, one, two or three in, 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 in the CVM that yeah. would be tailor-made for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. I think that's a super good way of explaining what the landscape looks like. So maybe uh, as, as we are ending, uh, nearing the end of, of this conversation, I have uh, our traditional questions. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so uh, the first question is, uh, what's your proudest moment in the career? You oh. know, something you launched and then it went through the roof. Can you share? I, I think it's the whole journey uh, mm -hmm. that uh, I, I'm really grateful uh, for, for the people I was working with. Mm -hmm. So uh, having the team that uh, I think I've managed to turn quite well with yeah. the team. So. In, inside so, the team as well. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I think that's, that's, uh, that's really important that you have someone you can really trust. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think this is the biggest win. 
uh, we had a uh, friendly chat with, uh, with a friend of mine who was saying like, it's not a matter what exactly you do and how exactly you do it, but it's impar- important with whom you are doing it. Yeah, the people. Yeah. And uh, this is what actually makes this experience and joy and journey, you know, Joyful. Yeah, yeah. Very, very uh, nice. you, you, mm-hmm. you, you, you can name some, some wins that uh, have to become number ones. And, and, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, I think it's, it's about the progress and about uh, your, your, your people that are surrounding you. So. Very good. Yeah. So next question is the opposite. What's the biggest failure that now you maybe laugh at, but <laughs> then it was not yeah. so funny? <laughs> uh, I recall two. <laughs> okay, please. <laughs> yeah. So one was... Kind of funny. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, that's happened here in Lithuania. Uh, I don't think that would happen in Middle East mm-hmm. by no means. But yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, I received a message uh, that says competitor mm-hmm. and it got really aggressive off over there. And, uh, you, you know, we were really, you know, fighting. We, we were really on, 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 on a hot pan. So yeah. giving us something that was, you know, uh, trying to beat our price perception is, you know, it's like a red flag for the bull. Yeah. So and we, we are acting really fast. I immediately checked with the team. So what's, what's happening over there? What, what kind of offer is it like crazy, like half, half of the price? Uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, we have to check it. So uh, and we don't have even the, the, the consent of, for, for, for me to send that. Yeah. So like, maybe we are spamming all, all the customers and stuff like that. So I immediately send that to the lawyers and put the, the team on, on, uh, on the action saying, we have to think on, on, on the response immediately. Like, uh-huh. <laughs> team was laughing at the time. <laughs> That was April Fool's Day. Oh, wow. <laughs> so uh, th- that was a big joke for, from, from my team, actually. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, so uh, they got you. And that, this yeah, point. and uh, th- th- this was a little too late, so our legal were already submitting the file to, to, to regulators saying that competitor is not, <laughs> is not behaving nicely, so it was a good laugh for, for wow. our competitors okay. as well. But yeah, it was... Uh, uh, the second one was, uh, was maybe not that funny is is more about making things that are uh, you know down to down, down, down to reality we were closing down some prefix on, on, on uh, basically we had small basin in a fixed line which uh, we were phasing out and uh, we just did it by the book and we sent out uh, the closure letters for all the base uh, which was not a fresh customer base mm-hmm. and we ended up touching some customers that were not even there with us anymore. Yeah. So that was something that I was uh, took as a, as a big lesson to, so to make sure. So you kind of yeah. uh, erroneously sent uh, messages to people who were no, even no longer with yeah. the company. Okay, and yeah. They were not longer yeah. in, in uh, walking in this, in this yeah. planet. So. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. So that was, that, that was something that you just want to make sure that something you do or that definitely... Uh, Testing the target uh, the, group is important. Yeah. yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you, you, you find other ways to, to touch them than mm-hmm. uh, simply send, send letters. So this is again data, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Making sure that's fresh and there's... Uh, quality. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah, uh, maybe uh, you have some book recommendation, podcast recommendation for people who would like to understand more about this area, maybe deepen their experience. What are your sources <clears throat> of inspiration? I know some old one that's called Space Race. Okay. Uh, that's, this is about the efficiency of marketing when it mm-hmm. comes to media investment. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's still relevant. Okay. And uh, I honestly think if Nobel Prize will be, be given to math- mathematicians, uh, someone who will be able to, to you know, uh, make sure this model actually works <laughs> should be getting that. Okay. Uh, th- this is something that's you no know, uh, constant topic, uh, and I never see a model that actually works. So. <laughs> so, still relevant. Uh, yeah, I think it's still relevant. Uh, another one I would uh, recommend is uh, is uh, quite recent one. It's, it's called Perform. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, uh, it's actually written by by a startup wise guys founders that uh-huh. uh, it, it is. It's more about the startup. How it's really basic book that would uh, tell you about how you want to build a new company. Uh-huh. But I think lots of things you can take it from there to make sure that your team is also is also fitting that and it has that spirit of of, 
of, uh, of a new founded company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so I, I really like the, 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 the way it's been presented. Uh, I think it's a, it's a great one to, to, to share. Thank you very much. So yeah, great to have you here. And uh, I hope everyone finds your insights super valuable as I found them today. Thanks, Charles. Yeah, Thanks. thank you. Thank you for listening to CVM Stories. If you enjoyed the show, please leave us a review. You can also ask us a question about a particular customer value management challenge you have at work. We will happily ask our experts to tackle your challenge in a future episode. 